Welcome to Producers Toolbox. I'm your host, Carol Adrian, and today we have the first of two really exciting shows. Anybody out there in our audience who is an actor, wants to be an actor, is thinking about being an actor, this is for you. We are addressing this particular show to actors and wannabe actors 18 years old or over. We may talk about child actors in a later show, but this is going to be the first of a two-part mini-series. And we are really especially blessed today because we have people who are casting royalty on the East Coast who really cast actors for Hollywood feature films, for network television shows. We have Diane Heary and Jason Loftus from Heary Loftus Casting, Emmy winners of, with 30 years experience and people who probably have M. Night Shyamalan on their speed dial. <laughs> so I'm delighted to introduce you to them. I'm very grateful that they took the time. These are people with huge um, projects. I, off the top of my head, I think you did uh, Mayor of Easttown. You did the new Adam Sandler movie, Hustle, uh, Concrete Cowboys. Their website, Heary Loftus Casting, will show you an impressive number of products projects. Now, casting agents are a really special, very high level breed. If you are an actor who wants to work in Hollywood movies at this very high professional level, this is what you need. Now, casting directors are different from agents. Casting directors are your actual link to that project. And we're so today we're going to talk about how to prepare to act at this particular level. And next month, please tune back in because we are going to talk about auditioning, which is, again, a two-step, very specialized area. So Diane and Jason, welcome, and thank you guys so much. <laughs> um, thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. My pleasure. So let's talk a little bit about, now, what's the first thing that you find that an actor needs? <laughs> well, we, I always joke. I said the first and foremost thing that any actor needs is talent. Uh, and I know it sounds <laughs> Jesus to say it, but I mean, that's that's critical, obviously. Um, and, and we feel many times that actors need to understand where they are in the in the, uh, the scope of things, where they would fit in in the industry. And understand, oh, am I a beginner? Do I need I have more to learn or you know, where I am in, in the process? Because once you can recognize that, you know where to start yourself. You really have to be able to look in the mirror and, and assess yourself as objectively as possible. I think it's, it's yeah. not like when you have two drinks and you think you know how to dance, right? That's right. <laughs> this is different. Now, what now, you guys really deal at the highest level of, of professional film and television. So this is a pretty specialized area. Um, how do you plan and prepare to... Now, I know that this is an area that is highly competitive and that rejection is terrible, but you really have to be prepared to face both those things. Now, what do you recommend for preparation? Well, there's a there's a number of things that actors do um, it, to prepare themselves. One is is the simplest answer is to act. And that can be in any format, any stage, YouTube, you know, the community theater, um, theater anywhere. Um, th those those are the places where actors um, learn the craft. Um, there are. You know, a lot of times, you know, actors will come up through a, you know, it will go to a certain school, um, you know, but when you're talking schools for actors, you have to make sure um, that it's a school that's preparing you for your professional life. Um, that's that's teaching you things that are going to help you compete as an actor. And the word compete is very important there because. Um, one of our, Diane and I love meeting people who 
um, love to say to us, you know, Hey, how do I get a line in a movie? Do, what do I need to do? And, you know, uh, in our minds, what automatically comes up are the lines and lines of people that are trying to get that one line. Um, and you know, obviously preparation is I- I extremely important in that. And, um, there are circumstances where, you know, movies are looking for real people, but those are two different things. Like if you, there are circumstances where if, you know, a movie's looking for a real cop who just knows how to, you know, properly put on handcuffs or something like that. Yeah. Um, when, when you're talking about actually doing scenes, um, it's very hard for a young actor to understand what they need to do um, and, you know, what the motivation is, what, what the goal of something is without being trained and without going through um, the rigors of, of actually doing it. And, and like I said, there's a lot of different ways people do that. There's um, a lot of people shoot their own YouTube videos, shoot their own movies. A lot of people um, get involved in stage productions and things like that. Yeah. I mean, there, there's so much, there's so much involved in, in being prepared like that, that many people think they, they think of that. Oh, someone so was discovered sitting on the, you know, the stool at the luncheonette. That's how old I am. I remember that story. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so and, and so everybody, they, they hook on to that and think, oh, well, that's how it, how it works. I'm going to get discovered. And so many times when you see somebody who was a breakout star at age 50, oh, they were just discovered. No, they weren't. You're going to find out they've been working at this for 30 years. It just took them that long to get huge recognition. And, and so many, we get, I can't tell you, we get phone calls uh, all, every week of, you know, I'm the next star. You have to, you have to discover me. Literally that kind of words we get from people. And like, well, what have you done? Nothing, but I am, I'm going to be a star. Oh, yeah. I've always been struck anytime I've been on a set. I always thank God I'm not an actor. <laughs> it just seems like incredible pressure. But when those cameras are rolling, it's thousands of dollars a minute. There is no like, oh, show me how. I mean, you really have to come into that. I've been impressed with actors who come in with this confidence and they are ready to rock. And, and they're, not, they're not in training. They, they have trained. I heard somebody say the other day, point out that Jason Momoa, prior to Aquaman, he had really been doing roles for 20 years before he even got Game of Thrones. He was he had experience in much smaller things. So he was not an unknown once he was on set. Right. So how can you sense that about incoming actors, whether they're mm. going to be like on point at the right moment? Yes and no. Um, they're confidence is so important. And, you know, that there are certain things that, you know, translate to success across multiple professions and confidence is one of them. Um, but Diane and I often see confidence without um, the skill to back it up. And that's, that's where you have to find, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. We, we think of people like Diane, like um, Stephen Hill, who um, auditioned with us and, and other people, for I would say 15 years. Um, and Steven would audition. He, he first started auditioning for us with, you know, roles that were one line and he would book it. And because he was such an interesting look and he, he, there was something about him that was different. Um, and to all the way to, um, you know, he was a regular on Hawaii five Oh, the, the, you know, um, the remake of it. Ooh. Um, and, one of the most interesting things is talking about was there was an article in variety about newcomer, Stephen Hill. And, you know, he had been around doing things for at least 20 years. Um, and, you know, it just, his preparation met opportunity um, where he started getting those opportunities and he, and he could deliver in those opportunities because he, he had worked his way up. There is, there is something to be said for, um, a lot of what Diane and I see are people who are working their way up in the industry. We, we cast everything from the one word, the one liner to, you know, number five, number four, sometimes number three on the call sheet, you know, and you know, those 
are very different things you, they, from being a person who just has to be there to carry a scene to a person that has to be there to carry a movie or a TV show. Um, you know, it, it, they're, they are different things. And a lot of times those people who get to carry a TV show have had to work their way along on the ladder. But the, the other interesting thing is, though, that the expectation from a producer and a director is they're expecting the same level of uh, professionalism from that person who's new on set with one line to deliver as and as the same as your lead. And that's where the problem comes in, because yeah, you're you, you're new, you're young and you it is your first time, but you have to act like you've been there before. You need to you need to have you know, that confidence in yourself and have done some research about what to expect when you're on a set. So you don't look like a newbie. You know, I always joke. It's like, well, when you hire a plumber, you expect him to come with his tools. And it's the same with an actor. You know, they're hiring. They think a professional actor, they're expecting you to come fully ready. You know, they don't want to hear it's your first job. So and that's the difficult line that many, many new actors have to have to walk because of yeah. that. Producers don't grade talent on a curve. Mm. Um, they want to, they don't come to Philadelphia or wherever else we cast. They don't come here and say, well, let's see who's good for Philadelphia. They want people there. They want to tell a story. So they, they don't want the differencing, you know, I'm sure everyone's seen television shows or movies where, um, something felt an actor felt out of place. And a lot of times that actor feels out of place because of nervousness and never being on a set before. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, that, you know, Diane and I have been there. I mean, we started as actors. Um, okay. So one of the hardest things to do in TV and film is to be a day player because an actor will come onto set with an entire crew who's been together for four or five weeks, sometimes multiple movies together, um, actors who've been working together all the way through pre-production. And now you have a day player who's coming on and their job is to say, would you like fries with that? When everyone else is, is completely in a groove and is in, you know, they're working through scenes. Um, and a lot of times producers make, to, make selections on people that they know can handle that situation um, because it is, it's, 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 it's a situation that is, that has so many pitfalls for a person coming in for a day. Um, you know, familiarity um, they're, they're not really sure what it's like to work with this director. Sometimes the, 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 the director's vocabulary when they're directing you that you may not be used to that. Um, so all those things make it really difficult. So I guess I bring that up to bring up, what you originally asked about with training is that exact reason is why training is so important. Um, and the right training is important. Um, if you are, if you are choosing an acting school, you, you have to look around the acting and, and see what the other people in the class are doing. Um, are they working actors? What are their goals as being actors? Um, do they want to do community theater, which is great, which is wonderful. Do they want to compete with prof other professional actors? Um, so in choosing an acting school, it's probably one of the most important decisions you make, because if you're going to invest your time in it, you want to make sure that you're being given the tools to succeed in an environment that isn't incredibly forgiving. So you need to be able to um, navigate those and some way. And, and Diane and I will tell you, Diane, am I wrong? <laughs> the only way really to survive it is if you have an experience of kind of like what's coming at you. Yeah. There really is a difference too between studying acting for the stage and studying acting for the screen. It, it's a much more amplified thing on, uh, for live theater, isn't it? I mean, there's a, a yes more no. of a subtlety. Yes and no, but it, it, good acting is good acting no matter where it is. I mean, it's okay. about, uh, without sounding hokey, it is about the truth of mm -hmm. what your character is. And, you know, the good stage actors can also do film. They just understand where the focus is. You know, is the focus the audience is 100 feet away or is the focus with the camera six inches away? And they just, they just know how to do that adjustment. 
So it's, you know, it's more about just, you know, understanding yourself and you know, the technical stuff comes later as an actor uh, and which is just as important because I think part of that problem also with actors is they don't, many of them come, come into this with pie in the sky and forget that you are a self-contained business as an actor. So you have, you're creating the, the product you're selling is yourself as an actor, but at the same time, you are a business person selling that product as an actor. So you have to be a little schizophrenic of being the creative person, the actor and the business person. And that's sometimes just as important as being the good, cre the creative actor as well. Do you find that it's important? I think one of the things when I began producing that I, I never expected to love, but I do, is that it is really a team effort. It's not just about upon whom the spotlight shines at any given moment. It's everybody else on that crew. And you've really got to be working in sync with them. Do you, do you find that that's, that that's a, an industry truth? Oh yeah. Um, you know, I mean, Diane was jumping on that one too. The, uh, I can see her talk, um, at filmmaking, whether it's TV and now really I would consider episodic television, you know, it, the quality is, is right there with filmmaking now where they used to be a little different. Um, there is no more collaborative medium than filmmaking. Um, it, it takes, you know, if you're, you're talking from a well, well-written script, to, uh, you know, a talented cast, to um, all the other elements of storytelling, which are, you know, cinematography, music, um, you know, it, it's a collaborative effort. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's interesting. It's always, it, you know, it's interesting that the Oscars have, you know, they have the best picture and they have the best director. Um, but it's kind of, it's kind of a weird thing, at least to me, because, you know, with, you know, filmmaking, one person isn't responsible for what completely comes out. Right. Um, it is truly all the way down to the PA who's doing lockups, you know, keeping people, you know, away from certain things. It is, there is no more collaborative effort. And for actors, it's, you know, one thing, you, you know, is from, you know, sp thinking of Mayor of Easttown, Kate Winslet made every actor who was in a scene with her better. She is a very giving actor. She, she, she does when they're doing reverses, she stays and she stays with the other actor. Um, and she absolutely elevates whoever's around her. I mean, that's, it's, that's what good actors are collaborative and they help each other and you can really see it in the quality in the end. How can we prepare for that going in. I know you guys had mentioned acting schools. So, and also we talked a little bit about uh, doing stuff on YouTube, uh, but it really sounds like you kind of need to, you benefit from being with other people and, and bouncing the work off one another. It, are there any specifics that we should look for in terms of training? Well, it, it, you can't learn to act in a vacuum. And first of all, and, and I don't think, there, there is a thing of learn to act. I think um, you either have the innate talent or you don't. And it's really just to finding a, a school or a class that helps you bring it to the forefront and helps you form it better. Um, so, but, but that's, that's a real personal search. Some people are, are find individual classes uh, at a community theater or at a professional theater who has classes. Some people end up at actual acting schools and you need to tr try them all because sometimes they may all be good schools, for instance, but they may just not be right for you. You know, find one that's, that's speaking to you with what you need and what your needs are. And also consider that you may need to do multiple schools because you need different viewpoints. You, you get, you get, stuck with one teacher, for instance, for too long, and then you're only seeing tunnel vision, how that one teacher was seeing you. Maybe it's time now to find somebody else for a different view on things. It's, it's, it's like an athlete getting a coach, you know, you want to find, you know, the coach who knows how to coach, you know, your batting, but somebody who also knows how to coach your pitching, you know, it's their different things. So it's, 
it's I think that's a real critical thing of doing your research on it. And re- like Jason said earlier, finding a place that matches your goals as an actor. Are you are you interested in being a professional? Then you want somebody who's gearing towards professional talent as opposed to, you know, there are there are act, you know, acting classes at the, some of the community theaters and they're good. I'm not saying they're not, but they may not be teaching to the level that you're aspiring to. You said something interesting. I'm sorry. Okay. You said something interesting the other day about asking yourself, why do you want to be an actor? Can you talk a little bit about that? Is that, is that going to be different for everybody or is there something that, that drives us? Well, yeah, it is different for everybody, I guess, you know, and you have to, you know, you have to understand yourself. It, It does come down to that. Know thyself attitude so that you understand why, why I want to take this road because it's not an easy one. We'll be honest. It it is a difficult road for anybody. And to understand like an actor, if you book one acting job out of every hundred auditions, you're doing really well. Wow. (laughs) You know, a working actor is considered an actor who books one job every six months. So, you know, it's, it's not easy. So you need to, before you dive in, you really have to think, am I willing to make this kind of commitment? Because on our end, our expectations is you're now presenting yourself as that professional. So where our expectations are, you are ready for all these commitments. It really is something I, I hadn't known the numbers were that vastly different. But I I know uh, we've worked a lot with young people, high school and college students on this particular show. And when kids talk to me about that, I always suggest just I'm not an actor, I'm a producer. But I always suggest if you're going into acting, learn another, learn lighting, learn something else so you can actually be on set and see other actors. and, And should you turn out not to be an actor at the level you were hoping for, you can still be part of that incredibly wonderful collaborative group that makes films. I hope I'm not giving bad advice. What do you guys think? No, I mean, you know, it's just like anything you want to, especially with young people, you just need to become involved. And what we tell actors all the time is there's a big, there's a bit of a stigma in our business sometimes when people who do extra work Mm -hmm. and people who, well, I would counter that and say, if you don't have any experience, an easy way to get experience and see what goes on on these sets and how it moves is do is to do extra work, see what it's all about. Um, and, and even better, um, if you ever get the opportunity to do stand-in work where they, they set up the lighting around the talent, they hire someone who's the same height and basically body build. Um, I can't tell you how many actors and I'm not going to give their names, but (laughs) who have become (laughs) exponentially better actors because they did stand in work and they just got to be up close and watch actors work. Mm -hmm. So it's just like anything, anything you consume that is in the field you want to be a part, you know, you want to be a part of, whether it's you, 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 well, there's, there's no such thing as volunteering anymore, but the, you work as a PA, anything, you just try to get involved any way you can will benefit you. Philadelphia, I'm told, is is a unique market for actors. Is that why? Why is that? Um, yeah, Diane will tell you, but it, I, I see it as unique is a, a Philadelphia actor can work multiple markets. Mm-hmm. They can work markets from New York, Philly, Baltimore, Washington, and some now work um, Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're working all over the Eastern Seaboard. Um, it, you're in a unique area here as, as a Philadelphian. We, we tend to own a car, which makes it easier for you to get places. Um, whereas the New Yorkers don't own, own cars. It's not as easy for them to get to other cities. Um, so that's one unique aspect. I think Diane has another thought. Oh, no, I, I think Jason's absolutely right. That, and that's part of um, what so many of our actors have, have realized to stay competitive and to maintain the average of how many shows you want to book, how many roles you have, 
you, you do expand your 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 horizons to other cities so that, yeah, you know, New York's an hour and a half away. Baltimore is an hour and a half, two hours. Pittsburgh. Why not Pittsburgh? Exactly. There's a lot shooting in Pittsburgh. Really? And so, you know, you want to be able to to and you know, investigate every opportunity you can have and don't shut yourself off from anything because you never know where something's going to come from. Or even uh, like a, a weird instance, I knew an actor who he got a phone call um, saying, oh, you, are, you audition for another movie. This was a different casting director, I know. And she said, he called the actors, you audition for a different movie. And um, this director didn't want to audition for this role. So he looked at audition tapes from another movie and you're just getting booked. They never even auditioned. But he says, but you have to be in Ohio tomorrow. He was like, I'm in the car. I'm out of here. So, you know, but so you never know where that, that opportunity is coming from. You mentioned the other day, Diane, that, that a, an actor, you know, well, uh, got booked for something and got six pages of lines that he had to memorize by the morning, the next morning. Mm -hmm. That can happen. Oh, absolutely. And, and now, actually, because of the world of oh, that we live in now with COVID, so much of it is you're, you're taping your own audition to send it in. So because of that, actually, that has opened opportunities for a lot of other actors that, you know, they're getting more auditions because they don't have to drive to New York. They can tape it from home. You know, we heard of one actor who had 14 auditions in one weekend. He's just boom, 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 taping them out at his, at his house. I hope he got one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, Jason and Diane, thank you so much. And to our audience, please join us next month, because now that we've talked about prepping, we are going to get into the specifics of auditioning. So one step closer to that plum roll or walk on uh, to begin. Um, so uh, we will pick up with Diane and Jason again next month. And thank you so much for joining us on Producers Toolbox.